We just like were talking about like our fucking kids with seizures and <laughs> like her dead friends. Seizure mom podcast. I'm sure there is one, by the there, way. I'm there sure probably there is. is. Um, we don't want to steal your idea if you're the host of the Seizure Mom podcast. We're not moms with seizures. We're moms <laughs> who are trying to mom with kids that get seizures. <laughs> Hello, Casey. Hello. Welcome back. Um, thank you. Where are you? That's the thing. Like I'm saying welcome back, but you've been in so many places. I know that you're home in New York, but it's weird for me to say welcome back to New York because... It's been waiting for me. <laughs> like Taylor Swift said. Um, yeah, it was... It's been a journey. I guess we'll just go into it. We'll just get we'll into just it. Just get guys. into we'll it. We didn't have a it. podcast we... last week. Mm-hmm. And so um, yeah. and I know and people were concerned and I mean fair play. Like, yeah, I would <laughs> would have been concerned too. And it wasn't that I was like trying to be cryptic or anything like for like myst- mystery mystery sake, but like I just there were you know, like I had to like I didn't have time to like, but I didn't, I don't know. Also, I didn't sometimes have time to you like, got to get through the thing that you're getting through that's interrupting. I like, can I tell you something, Gacy? I actually think that that's like a really valuable thing to just note for everybody. Like sometimes you just got to get through the thing that you're getting through and like, don't be, and, and not be as concerned about other people's involvement or thoughts, feelings, and desires to know what's happening. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Of Makes course. Oh, I'm like not even talking about like people that have podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> no, just like in life. I mean, listen. In life. In life. It's just like we're all, fa- you know, everybody's facing all like a lot of things all the time. And I just think like, uh, especially like when something, you know, like, so basically what happened was, so you know, I was going to do the dinosaur. Okay, let's just, I'm just, just going to rewind do it. Okay, so back weeks. Just rewind. A couple, so I was going to do the dinosaur show, junior show on December 2nd, which also is my mom's 80th birthday shout out, Barbara Phillips. And then I was like, as the week went on, I was like, I should just fly there for my mom's birthday. Like, I, like this feels like wrong for me to not go for her birthday, especially because I had to be in LA starting on Monday for meetings that I had. Um, all week yeah. in Los Angeles um, that had been planned for like a month, basically. Yeah. And um, so I talked to like Lou, our friend Lou and his wife Adele, of course. Not Shout Adele. out to I mean, Lou the, and Adele. Check out their I was, podcast, Raw Impressions. Yeah, I was basically just I was basically just saying that just to make. So we could mention Adele's name. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't have anything to do with that. But she did say, she. I did tell her and she was like, no, I feel like you should go be with your mom for her 80th birthday. And I was like, great. And um, Adele's the perfect person to be married to a rock star, by the way, like a, like a rock and roll guy because yeah. she's so like even keeled and not that Lou's not even keeled. He's also famously even keeled, but I feel like she's like the voice of reason beyond reason. Yeah. And I think the only reason why it didn't occur to me that like I needed to go be with my mom for her 80th birthday, which is like such a big deal. I was with my dad for his 80th birthday over the summer, you know, Um, it was just that I think because her birthday falls in that spot between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And like, I see my family for both. Yeah. Well, at least this year I did. Um, I'm drinking broth, guys. Sorry. <laughs> that seems like a good thing to be doing. I haven't eaten and I'm like a little, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know what's interesting is like I thought about this at the time when you said like, because you said on the podcast, I hope my mom doesn't think that I'm saying I'm not going and I'm going to surprise her because I'm definitely not. I thought about two things. I thought about how that would only convince me more than ever that someone was coming to surprise me and I would ultimately be disappointed. Um, And then also what I was thinking is that 
Your mom has a birthday in that weird spot. Like anyone that has a birthday between Thanksgiving and like the holidays, that weird, I bet they get um, screwed out of their birthday celebrations all the time. My cousin's birthday was, well, it still is, the day after Christmas. And I always felt so bad for him because he got boned out of his birthday every year. Yeah, it's... I know it's not great, I don't think, for people. Yeah. I mean, Emily's, we've talked. I have so many friends that were born that week of, of Thanksgiving yeah. or one of the weeks, you know, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, so I talked to my sister. We like worked it all out. And then it was, then, and, and then I was like, well, it actually does make sense because I have to be in LA. And so it's just like all of it was good. So then on Saturday, um, I was, honestly, well, I, the car was like almost there. And I went to the basement of my family home because I don't know why. I was, I had this, I don't know, whatever. It doesn't matter. I was looking for a piece of clothing that I couldn't find. And I was literally like in the basement, like muttering to myself, like digging through all of these, these like clothes and there's a rolling rack of stuff from my closet. I don't know. And I just like, I've been feeling so overwhelmed by like all this like fucking mess, you know? And then you have too much stuff. Well, I don't, I don't have enough space. So let's reframe (laughs) because I don't have too much stuff, Casey. I have the perfect amount of stuff for me. I don't have one more. I need more. I need more space. One more house. I don't need one more house. I just don't want that one anymore. I just don't want... I just don't know what I want. I don't know what I need. Um, Anyway, and I was like kind of like muttering to myself and then like I heard Mark screaming for me and I was like, what does this fucking guy want now? (laughs) And I went upstairs, but then I heard like his voice and I knew something was really wrong and... He just said, it's Birdie, it's Birdie. She's had another seizure. The paramedics are on the phone. And I like, I don't know. I just started like, I don't even know. This is, I just, this is, I don't know. I gotta, I don't know if I can like, I don't know if I can really like talk about this actually. I just actually don't know if I want to talk about this. She's okay. I mean, like, I, I don't want to, I don't know. I don't know, Casey. I'm not having like a... I talked, um, <clears throat> sorry, um, the paramedics were on FaceTime and, um, she had like just come out of the seizure and she was still in the like post aura state. Yeah. And she was like, they were like hooking her up with stuff and on FaceTime. I I've, I've been stuck. I feel stuck. I feel stuck. I my therapist yesterday said that she she's like you sound really disassociating, like you're disasso- like you're disassociated. Yeah. And I understand because I feel like I don't I feel like this year has I don't understand what's happening. And I feel like stuck in a fucking movie in a in a in a way that's like um like not even <laughs> like not even disassociated, just like literally like I like I keep getting put in different movies. Like and um I just wanna be in mine, like my the my life again, like my real, like my movie, (laughs) my, my movie where it goes, where things are, where it's okay. And, um, mm, because, you know, she was like, it was terrifying to see how she was. And she was just reaching like the, her friend who was with her, they'd gone to see the Hunger Games her friend who was with her was holding the phone. So she was like kind of, it was like this weird medium shot, guys. It was a medium shot. That's what we call it. 
in movies and TV shows. It yeah. was a medium shot. So, like, you could see sort of, like, everything that was happening. So, that was, like, just very... It felt... It was just so weird. But she was, like, reaching toward the camera and just saying, like... Like, calling out for me. Like, yeah. just saying, Mama. Like, Mama. Mama. Where are you? Like, Mama. Uh, and it was chaotic. And the paramedics were talking to us the whole time and asking us questions. And when Birdie had her first seizure, it was the first day of the Mean Girls mus- musical movie. She remember? Did I talk about that? Yeah. Then I did. Right. A little bit. Yeah. And I couldn't. I couldn't. Obviously, I couldn't leave set. <clears throat> and so, Mar- and Mark had run to the school and had gotten there at the same time as the uh, paramedics. So. He had seen her in like this, a similar sort of thing before, you know? Yeah. But um, it was really awful seeing it like on a screen. Yeah. And being in a different country across an ocean. And then it was just sort of like, they at a certain point, they had asked all the questions and whatever. And they were like, we should hang up so that we can. Like, you know, she can, we can focus on what's, but we'll be in touch. And her friend Sarah was like, we, I'll call you, you know, text you, whatever, as soon. So they'd gone to the movies in Stockholm. It's actually like, um, it's amazing that they were there because their school is far from, yeah, you know, and there's like not a hospital basically like where their school is. I mean, they're just right. uh, And, um, but so they'd gone into Stockholm. And so they were like, everything was, they were like literally two minutes from the children's hospital. They, the paramedics were there like, almost like immediately kind of, I guess. Yeah. And Bertie's friend, Sarah, shout out Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> literally, I don't even understand. I mean, she's 17, but this girl managed to get one person to go tell the theater to shut it the fuck down. She got two guys that they obviously didn't know who were sitting behind because Bertie started like choking and like throwing up. Okay. um, To like move Bertie gently to the ground and put her on her side. She got someone else to call the Swedish 911, the paramedics. Like, it's not 911. And I, again, we've talked about this. Why isn't it the same universally everywhere in every country? <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. It is actually... It's usually something 1-1, but you have to know that first number. <sighs> I think it's so fucking stupid. I'm just going to say it again. I don't know. I know the world has a lot bigger fucking issues right now than this, but like, I do think, come on, guys. Fucking just all, all agree on something. Even yeah. if it was just like three zeros. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. Anyway. Um, but she got someone else to call the paramedics. And then she fucking had the, like, she, like, had the, like, she knew or just immediately did it. She called the school and the house parent at their dorm told him what was happening. So he got in the car and started driving towards Stockholm, which is like 45 minutes away. Okay. And she got our phone numbers from him. And yeah. then she faced, she tried me first and I was in the basement muttering to myself, I guess. And then uh, Mark. It was just like, she really, that kid really fucking handled an emergency incredibly well, Um, which is not the first emergency that girl has handled because she had an injury herself last year, which was crazy, and she's okay, but she was at Children's Hospital. (laughs) Not like school, totally unrelated to school. (laughs) Um, So then it was just sort of chaos for like a, a, a while. 
Especially because like then like my phone started ringing because the chauffeur was like, hello, ma'am, I'm outside. Are you ready for your flight to Phoenix? And, um, and you were like, no, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, we were just like, it was just a lot to like for Mark and I to immediately just like have to. Yeah, I was like I, literally Googling like private planes. Like I was like, I don't know. I was right. like, how much does it cost? $100,000? Can I put right. that on a credit card? How does right. that work? Like it was, yeah. I was so, I was like, how do I not know anyone with a fucking private plane? I got to hang out with fancier people. <laughs> Would Taylor Swift fly me to Sweden right now? Who knows Taylor oh Swift? No, I mean, guys, I didn't, this is just, it, that all happened in like 0.2 seconds. All of those thoughts. Um, I mean, it it is a good thing to think about though. Who would be the person most likely to loan you their their private plane? I don't have anyone. We got to think about it. I do know a private pilot. I don't know if he currently owns a plane, but I will. <laughs> I will look into it and get you his info <laughs> for future. Yeah. Uh, hey, Casey. Yes. Um. You know what I was bummed I couldn't bring with me uh, for international travel? <laughs> I bet I can guess. Uh, yeah, can you? <laughs> <laughs> it was my packs, guys. You could my... not bring your packs. Yeah, nope. 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 Not for international travel nope. when you most needed it. But I'm so glad I was waiting for you when you got home. Honey, it was there for me in the car on the way there and on the car. <laughs> <laughs> on the way back from the airport. No, I'm kidding. But yeah, it was waiting for me when I got home and boy, did I need it. Okay, because guys, what happens when you use a PAX is that they have a full line of devices that fit your needs. You can do a, a vape, a little pen, PAX has you covered. Their devices are combustion free. They deliver big hits, smooth highs, no smoke, less odor. And PAX devices come in a variety of colors and are customizable to fit your style. Also, I have my name on mine. Anyway, so cute. Behind every PAX device is a team of expert engineers and chemists, and they have their own in-house toxicology team, which makes them the only cannabis brand to have an in-house toxicologist dedicated to tox analysis of the cannabis pods and oils, which is incredible. And they subject their products to twice as much testing than the average cartridge. Their oil batches are tested four to five times before being released to the market. Guys, we also subject their products to a lot of testing. I tested at our... least four to five times. <laughs> what I love about PAX so much is that I'm sure a lot of you have been thinking about trying out a cannabis product. Perhaps like you have. You're, perhaps you should. You're cannabis curious and Canna you curious. Have either haven't can of curious. Can of curious. And you either haven't in a while or maybe you never have. And I'm not going to lie. I'm a nerd. But like when I was can of curious, I was a little nervous about what exactly I was getting. So with PAX, we just know. We know that it's safe. We know that it's going to be a great experience. Yeah. The product itself is chemically safe. And then the device is also safe. They have a thing called the isolated air path. And it means that the inhaled air goes directly through the cannabis and into your mouth. And it doesn't go through any electronic circuits. So there's no like LED or lithium battery exposure to what you're like inhaling, which is a big deal. It's a big deal. Yeah, other vape pens are running the air across the battery, which I wouldn't have even thought of. So thank I didn't you, know Pax, that. for thinking I didn't know. Why yeah. would we know? We're I not, didn't know. We don't know how to do things like this. We're not scientists. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, they are incredible. I also love that they invest deeply in social reform and sustainability and safe access for cannabis. And our support when you buy packs, it goes toward a more sustainable and equitable future for pe pe people, patients, and the planet. The three Ps, PAX era. <laughs> um, anyway, you guys, I think you don't even have to take our word for it. They've won all kinds of awards and everybody loves them. And ultimately, when you invest in a PAX device, 
You're investing in quality, safety, and sustainability. They are a proud leader in the cannabis space. And you can purchase the products online at PAX.com and at your local dispensary or head shop. But here's the deal. For use only by adults 21 and older, you keep out of the reach of your children and pets. In the case of accidental ingestion or overconsumption, contact the Poison Center, consume responsibly, and visit PAX.com slash busy for 15% off your first order. That's PAX.com slash busy for 15% off your first order. You know what did make it on my international journey though, however, all of my travel this week? Uh, did you bring your AG1 travel packs? I did. I did. I bring. I did bring my AG1 travel packs, especially because when you're traveling internationally, when you're traveling anywhere, and you guys are all traveling, I'm sure, shortly yes. at some point, even if it's just over to your mom's house who lives down the block, I would recommend <laughs> bringing your travel packs of AG1 because when you're traveling, you know, sometimes your gut can act up. Sometimes you just feel like. I don't know, like you need a little pick-me-up and AG1 always provides because it's just a scoop a day and it's essentially like having a multivitamin, a probiotic, a prebiotic, digestion enzymes, other like important adaptogens and energy support things. It's all just in this one little scoop. It tastes great. You mix it up. It's super easy. Sometimes I just put it in like a bottle of water and shook it up and drank it, you know? Just in my little, you know, my 10-pound water bottle that I drag around with me. (laughs) But um, it's incredible because we love AG1. They've been a longtime supporter of the pod. Um, We're a longtime supporter of them. AG1 is a foundational nutritional supplement. It supports your body's universal needs. And since 2010, AG1 has led the way, led the future of foundational nutrition, continuously refining the formula so that it's a smarter, better, safer way to elevate your baseline health. Guys, we really, really love them. Um, And I love to drink my AG1 and I love that it travels with me. So easy. AG1 is the supplement I trust to provide the support my body needs daily. And that's why they've been a partner for so long. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. You'll see how much you love those travel packs. Go to drinkag1.com slash busy. That's drinkag1.com slash busy. Check it out. Anyway, there's only one flight, nonstop flight, to Sweden a day in the winter from New York. It makes sense. Yeah. But... It, you know, it leaves at like 6 p.m. or something like that. So it's like, I think this was like 11 in the morning-ish or something like that. Yeah. So having to wait seven hours. It was not like a... It wasn't easy. Yeah. Um. So then we landed... Oh, and we... And like... But also we were discussing, like, do we both... I was like, obviously... Uh, I'll go. And Mark was like, well, I don't, I can't not go. And I was like, right, that makes sense. Okay. Right. But then we were like, but should both of us be on an airplane? You know what I mean? Like it was like. Right. uh, Yeah. And cricket, like we just. (sighs) So then we just were like, fuck it. And all three of us went. And, you know, by that point, by the time the plane took off, the house parent was there. She was like back to, to like make it, you know, she made sense. We talked, we FaceTimed with her. She made, she was making sure. sense. Like she didn't have any like paralysis or any, you know what I mean? Like, so all the things were like good. So they were keeping her overnight. And uh, Sarah was able to stay overnight with her on like a little pull-out bed. So it was like, it was good. 
um, we were like literally got, I swear to God, it felt like we got like the last three seats on that flight. I think we did oh my kind of, I don't How even, lucky. it was like yeah. crazy. And it was really weirdly crowded. And Mark and I were just like, why are all these people going to like <laughs> three degree Scandinavia? Right. Did you ever figure it out? Was there something I happening? said I thought that it was just, no, but I said, I think that it's just that like it's winter time and yeah, it's people like really beautiful there in the winter. Yeah. And um, when people go for like a little Christmas vacation thing, you know, like, yeah. So um, we landed at like six, seven in the morning, seven in the morning, got a cab and went straight to the hospital and saw our little peanut and. Stayed at the hospital for like a lot of the day because they were trying to get an MRI for her that day, but then it just wasn't going to work out. So we were like, she's going to come with us to the hotel, I think, right? And the doctors were like, yeah, that's fine. She's fine. Yeah. Um, But she needs to be on anti-seizure medication because she, you know, she does whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, well, what are we, what do we do about that? I don't know. It was just like kind of, also it's just like weird to be in a foreign country. And then I was like, you know what? We're going to just go home, I think. <laughs> like, we're just going to take her back to New York. <laughs> um, yeah. But she was, like, super sore. Yes. Like, so sore. Like, her body was in so much pain. And yeah. uh, her she had such a terrible headache. And she, like, wasn't dehydrated at all, you know, because... Yeah. But she just was having, like, throbbing headache. Yeah. Body was so sore and we went back to the hotel and she was just so sleepy too. She was just so tired and... Yeah. We are staying at our favorite hotel and um, by the way, I got the last two rooms in that hotel too. Oh, oh my gosh. Really worked out for us. Um, and I like gave her a bath and we got in bed and she like slept. She just kept sleeping, you know, for... That. Yeah. And then the next day, she was sleeping pretty late. And then we had to go to the, we had to go to her school to get her stuff, you know? Yeah. And so I got a car, like somebody, I like hired a car because I wasn't going to drive because it was like freezing and like literally snowing like all the time. Right. It was like snowing nonstop. It was crazy. Huh. I know. I've never been in a place like that. It was really interesting, actually. I'm sure some of you live in, like, Minnesota. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Montana. Some of you definitely live in Minnesota. Anyway. Um, so, we went to her school, got her stuff. We went to see... She saw, like, a bunch of her friends. Everybody was, like, freaking out. Um... Yeah, and then we and then we went back. But then she like got like after that whole thing, she used a lot of energy doing that, I think. And then she was just like yeah. exhausted again. And we had to go do a test at the hospital that they wanted to do before we flew with her. And then she was like so fucking grumpy and be really mean to me. And then the re like the afternoon just like kind of devolved and um she was being so mean and I wasn't handling it well and I was really stressed out, obviously. And Mark and I weren't getting along and um, I fell. I slipped on ice Aww. and like fell, and then like the kids were like laughing at me, and then I was like, "I hope you have a daughter someday that's as mean to you as you've been to me." <laughs> and then Bertie was like screaming, "Like I just had a seizure!" <laughs> and then Mark was like treating us both like we were his teenagers. And then I was like, you're the most unhelpful. And I was really mean to him. And then Cricket's just like sitting there with her headphones in, like looking at her phone. And it was just a disaster. And then I like went, I like left. Bertie and I had a room and Mark and Cricket were staying in a different room, obviously. And I like left and like went to go be in the sauna for a second. And then like Mark was calling me and I was like, what do you fucking want? And he's like, Cricket just got her first period. Oh my God. And 
I like got dressed really quickly and like ran back across the courtyard to where the their room was and went and saw the little buddy and I was kind of a little freaked out. She was freaked out and Aww. then I went up and told Birdie and then Birdie was like, "Oh no, you <laughs> should come up here." Aww. I was, we brought her up to our room and I gave her a bath and like since I had just packed Birdie's stuff at school I knew that she had clean underwear clean period underwear <laughs> I was like well thank god for that yeah um, and then we left Tuesday morning and got back here Tuesday afternoon and then I left Wednesday morning to go to L.A. because these fucking meetings and also, you know, I committed to hosting this like Planned Parenthood benefit for um, Doan, the dresses that I love. Like it was supposed to be a year ago and then we had to postpone it. And then um, I got like Michelle... I roped Michelle in to co-hosting it with me. <laughs> nice. Um, I know, but like also just because it had been like a year in the making and I needed to do those meetings anyway, uh, you know, Mark and I had like decided while we were in Sweden, we were just trying to like figure the scheduling of everything out. Sure. Uh, that I should just go anyway and do it. Right. And then for whatever reason, literally all of the meetings I was supposed to have throughout the week got put on one day, <laughs> except for one meeting that I like have over Zoom now, I guess, which is annoying, but it's fine. And, uh, but so yeah, so I like, land, I, so I like got to LA, so I left Wednesday early and I got there and I emailed our friend Harold Koplowitz from Child Mind Institute. Yeah. Because, you know, when Bernie had had the seizure in March, we just took her to whoever they like told us to take her to at the, you know what I mean? Like at the hospital, at the hospital yeah. they just like refer you to somebody and it was like, it was fine. But I just, at this point now, this is like, okay, two seizures is, well, it's too, too many. Let's be real. But well, when when Lincoln had his seizure, the highly respected neurologist said that he gives everyone one free seizure in life. But then once it's two, then, you know. Right. I couldn't remember. It was after Lincoln's second seizure, right? That's when you went. Well, Lincoln had like a very serious seizure that time that we talked about. And so I'm like, I'm right back there with you as you're talking about all the stuff that you went through. But it turns out that uh, he was probably having other smaller seizures before that we thought were something else. We thought were like fainting spells or... Well, that's what this neurologist that Harold... Shout out Child Mind Institute again, guys. Leading mental health um, organization in the country for children kids and teens and young adults. And like Harold Koplowitz was on our podcast like two years, three years ago. Right? A while back. Yeah. While, yeah. A couple years ago. I think. Um, for a book that he wrote, Scaffolding Parenting. Is that what it is? Yeah. Good yeah. book. Um, the scaffold, scaffold, scaffold effect. It's a great parent. By the way, it's like a great book. For parents. Anyway, just shout out to him. Because he literally responded in 15 minutes to my email. That's great. That's great. And got us in to see this incredible doctor at NYU. Oh, good. Who called me like immediately once Harold emailed him. Um, and he, and he, I talked to him first. Now I'm in L.A., um, he was like, I'm not trying to scare you. And just the deal is like, once you have two, two, everyone gets one free seizure basically. Yeah. But he's like, but once you have two seizures, the likelihood of you having another 
big seizure, two big seizures. Yeah. Yeah. The likelihood of you having a a third increases, you know, 80, 75% or whatever. And of course, the problem being like, you don't know where you'll be or what you'll be doing. Right. And like, this was best case scenario for this. Yeah. Yeah. Truly. Especially because, you know, she's in bed a lot on the weekends in boarding school, you know, herself. And um, so anyway, so he's like, I'd like to just put her on, start her on the anti-seizure medication immediately. And he ended up being able to see her that day. He made space for her to get in there. And so, yeah, she started the medication. I don't know which one it is, but, um, and then we're going to do, we have tests to do after the holidays and. Sure. And I'm sure that'll go on for some, some time. I think so. But he, he feels like she can go back to school, which she wants to do. Um, Okay. Can I recommend a product at this moment? What is it? Does Birdie have an uh, an Apple Watch? No. There is an app. This is why Lincoln got an Apple Watch. Uh, well, there is an listen, app called... Christmas is called, coming, right? <laughs> <laughs> there's an app called Seize Alarm. Mm-hmm. And uh, it will text... Well, that's where you get an app. You, Mark, Cricket, mm-hmm. if you want, immediately. We all have it for Lincoln. Here's what I will say is that... But I mean, it can text like the people at school. Yes, and it calls for help immediately. And the person has 60 seconds to say, I'm okay, I don't need help when there's a false alarm because there are false alarms. I cannot tell you how many texts we've gotten from Lincoln that are like, sorry, I was petting a dog. Sorry, I was scrubbing a pot. Sorry, I fell down. But I would 100% get those false alarms knowing that if he needed us that we would have a true alarm and help would be on the way mm-hmm. um so anyway it ha- it has brought us a lot of peace of mind yeah that's incredible it's a great tip um <laughs> <laughs> but she wants to go back to school and i'm sure that's hard in a way yeah I mean, I guess it turns out there's no part of being a parent that's not, right? Oh, oh I guess yeah. it turns out there's no part of being a person, of being a human <laughs> being in this moment in time and place and life that that is. As you were telling the whole saga, I was like, God, like a bunch of shit that was unlucky, straight up unlucky to have this happen to your kid, to have your kid be so far away is like doubly unlucky. But then when you were like, we got the last three seats on the plane, I was like, oh, thank God. We got the last room at the hotel. Oh, my God. Thank God. And then poor Cricket. Like, (laughs) it's so typical, right? Every person Cricket's age is, like, going to have their moment. And, of course, it happened in the middle of, like, this other moment where it was just like, I'm sure she was just like, oh my God, it's no big deal. Just this this weird thing to have happen at the weirdest time, you know? But I'm so glad you were all together and that like her sister got to be with her and that you had clean period panties. <laughs> like, oh my God. Just a lot of, a lot of shit luck, but a lot of good luck too. Like, thank you. Oh, goodness. I know. I know. Thank goodness. I know. I mean, thank God Sarah was the one that was with her. She yeah, was, yeah, exactly. Like, shout out to Sarah. I, mean, I literally will... was like, Sarah, what do you want for Christmas? What, is, <laughs> what, am, I buying? what am I buying? It? She's from New York, actually. She looks like Bert. It's crazy. Really? They look alike. Yeah. And she's older than Bert. She's a senior. And, yeah. But like, yeah, they do weirdly look alike. It's funny. Um, That's funny. I know. Anyway. Huh. Yeah, it was... No, I know. No, I know. No, but I mean, it all felt like... No, I know. I know. I know. 
Like, just yeah. thank goodness. Well, the same, a, again, same thing with Lincoln. Like, we had been gone for a week. He was home alone. And we got home in the middle of the night. And then he had that seizure first thing in the morning, the next morning. And, like, if we hadn't fucking been there. I know. I know. Like, I just, I can't even think about it. I can't even think about it. I know. I know. I know. Me we were there. We were there. Yeah, yeah exactly. I know. My, I know. I know. I know. I know. But, oh my I know. God. And then I was, you know, and then I was in LA and that was like insane and like just a whirlwind kind of thing <laughs> and cra- yeah. like just crazy, you know? Yeah. And, um, and then I flew back to New York. I took the red eye on Friday actually so that I could see Jenny. And my friend Simran, because I hadn't seen anybody. I was just like working and exhausted and then like, yeah. you know what I mean? And I also felt like I'm so fucked up time-wise and I've slept on so many planes that week that I was like, what's one more fucking sleep right. on a plane? Who cares? Like I hadn't been really sleeping through the night anyway because I'm just like, you know, well, yeah. also I like sort of have a hard time sleeping through the night. Since I was born, <laughs> like since I, since you know since I was a baby, yeah. yeah. Um, so don't you fucking write in and tell me it's perimenopause, motherfuckers? Because I swear <laughs> to God, <laughs> shut the fuck up. I'm not saying that I'm not in it. I'm just saying I can't take it when you like say a thing about yourself and somebody is just like perimenopause. I'm like, okay, great. Oh my gosh. I mean, no, fine, Eli, but also Eli, lots of things have lots of different reasons why. Here's what I'm gonna say, Eli. Also couldn't sleep since birth. Uh, he's never been a good sleeper. Mm-hmm. And the only thing that has ever helped him is a bouncy seat, a Fisher Price bouncy seat, which they don't make them for adults. So get one. Get one maybe for that's me. yeah. He maybe used to wear those dollar, out yeah. as a baby. He we we went through like four of them. He never slept in a crib, just a bouncy seat. So this maybe this is yeah, a million dollar idea. Adult bouncy seat, the vibrating one. I mean, honey, sounds like it would do something else at this point. <laughs> fucking Christ. Um, so anyway, yeah. So then just like uh, I landed Saturday morning. I felt kind of fine. I went and saw Cricks or I went back to the family home because Mark ha- was coming to LA for like his friend's birthday on Saturday. And then he had has he has work with Abby his partner this week and Birdie like really wanted to go with him to LA to see her friends and like so they so he took her to LA um so they're there now and on Saturday I got to see my friend Gil Keenan who's director he has the new Ghostbusters movie. He directed the new Ghostbusters movie that's coming out. Oh, nice. Um, But his wife, Eliza, and I met in prenatal yoga when Birdie and Cricket... No, my God, Birdie and Cricket. No. When I was pregnant with Birdie. (laughs) And she was pregnant with her daughter, their daughter, their child. Um, Anyway, so I saw Gil and I saw my friend Jill... And then I made that joke on <laughs> <laughs> about being Kermit. How I'm the Kermit. Muppets take Manhattan. Of course. But by the way, you know, Alan Storzinski did not understand the reference. And I think that's just the problem of being friends with someone who's 35. Yeah, that's on him. That's like 36. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so then, yeah, Saturday was just kind of like a whirlwind. I tried to do some like Christmas shopping with Jill and Cricket. <laughs> um, but like it's really hard to do Christmas shopping with your children, I just want to say. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Then I saw Gil and he came over for a while because he was going to see, they're good friends with Aubrey Plaza and he was going to see that play. And. I woke up Sunday morning 
and I was in like a, like I was like in a, I like was in a state. (laughs) I think it was like just the first moment that I had in a, in that, in a week, you know, like where I stopped completely. Yes. And like the entire day was like, I, I don't even know how to describe. I was like, I couldn't. It was really, really fucking hard. And I was, our friends, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, who like have the Spider Man movies and 21 Jump Street. And yeah. Phil is Irene New Earth's longtime partner, you know. They were in town doing a screening of Across the Spider-Verse, which I had never seen because it came out this past, wasn't it like the summertime kind of, like May maybe? Yeah. Anyway, they were in town doing like a screening and Greta was doing like a Q&A for them. So Cricket and I were going always going to go, you know, because Cricket loves animation. So I took her to that and like that was actually good for me to like interrupt my brain a little bit with like that movie. Yeah. Which, by the way, have you seen that movie? Yes. It's inc- I mean, like I liked, I really liked the first one. Yeah. Into the Spider-Verse. Into yeah. the Spider-Verse. This is across the Spider-Verse. This is like one of the most spectacular animated films I've ever seen. Yeah, it's wonderful. I think maybe it is. Like, it might be my favorite animated film I've ever seen. Yeah. It's so fucking incredible. It's it's up there. And the art. It's just the art. Yeah. I just am so impressed by, like, all of it. I would put it up there amongst my favorites. Even though I'm not, like, the most superhero-y person, even though I am. Oh, I'm not. you know that. you're not. I've not seen, literally, I've seen Black Panther. We all know that. (laughs) Yeah, I saw the very first. I can never remember what he's called. Robert Downey Jr. one. Ah, uh, Iron Man. Ugh, I always want to say RoboCop. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Cop. Iron Cop. I think that's it. I think those are the only <laughs> movies I've seen. I'm not even kidding. I I've never seen them. The, all, I've oh, seen wait, them all because easy. of like having you know. Having Boys. Lincoln as a as my child, but wow, um, yeah. Remember that time we went to see that play in Pasadena, and like uh, it was like a special preview of the play, so it was all like celebrities were there, and um, and me because I was your guest, and then you were talking to like everyone famous, and then all of a sudden you looked over, and then you were like, "Why do you know Alfred Molina?" <laughs> And I was like, A, he's Doc Ock from the Spider-Man movies. B, he's married to my friend Jennifer. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway. I didn't know he was in those movies. <laughs> yeah. Well, how would you know? You wouldn't know unless you were also Lincoln's mom somehow. I mean, <laughs> it's so wild. Honey love. My love. You know I have to do it. You know I have to do it. Guys. I love that you have to do it. I, have to I, do I it. I'd be disappointed if you didn't. Honey Love has been going everywhere with me this past month. I just love Honey Love so much. What have you been wearing? What's been going with you everywhere? Well, I've been trying to wear festive holiday attire. And, you know, when you put on a nice outfit, you want to take your photo in the outfit. Mm -hmm. And then I'm so tired of looking at a photo and being like, oh, you know what? Would have just like made this a little bit better if I had been wearing like a shapewear under this dress to just like smooth Mm -hmm. out the line a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I, I have just been wearing it at all times, which is not a problem because it's so comfortable and so easy. Here's the thing. Shapewear, when you're going to an event, it makes me very nervous sometimes because like if you have to go to the bathroom, Mm -hmm. who knows what's going to happen. With Honey Love, it's not a problem. Not. I can can do what I have to do, feel very confident 
uh, that I'll be able to get it off and back on without yeah. breaking well, a sweat. It doesn't, and... it never rolls up or down. Right. Which is right. so incredible. A game changer, yeah. I would say. Yeah. And it just look makes everything look just a little bit better. Like you feel a little more pulled in and put yeah, together. Fab, fab, I'm put like, together. honestly, it like has nothing to do with anything other than like fabric just falls nicer. Well, you know what yes. I mean? Like it just looks nice. It's just like, yeah, it's exactly. it games over it. It's yeah. Games over it. Um, I don't know. I just, we love, I like the t-shirt bra too. Cause I feel like some, so frequently I'm like just looking for a good bra. That's like, Makes your boobs look good in a t-shirt. That's all, you know, yes. that's all I ever want, to be honest that's with you. That's all I want. But honey love, thankfully, thankfully has delivered. <laughs> Ladies, people, give the gift of comfort this holiday season. Whether you are attending a winter wedding or hosting a, you know, post friends giving cookie party or cookie swap a family dinner at cookie swap or just you know or like hitting the holiday parties or just because you just are interested in an everyday little boost <laughs> you know honey love yeah. is the perfect plus one treat yourself to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save up to 20 percent off site-wide at honeylove.com slash best 20 this month only. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please, you guys, please support our show <laughs> and tell them that we sent you. It is time to ditch the underwire for good. Thanks to Honey Love. That's honeylove.com slash best 20. Oh my God. I have to put in my wild grain order. <gasps> oh my God. I really do. I got to do it. I have one on the way here right now. I told my family, I reported it to my family like it was the most important family news that's ever been delivered. Ugh. And they received it be because it is the most important family news ever. Everyone literally keeps going outside to see if wild grain has arrived on our doorstep. I mean, such a delight. I mean, we love the croissants. I love the fresh pastas. Cricket loves the fresh pastas. But I also just love having the, like a loaf of bread that I can like throw in. And I cook in the, I cook them in the toaster oven, guys. I do it. Oh, that's I have a toaster so oven, you know, like a little, so it's just like a little mini um, oven. And it honestly makes it, the whole house smells good. Yeah. Wild green bread, baking fresh, well, from frozen Baking fresh from frozen. <laughs> less. Every item bakes in 25 minutes or less. A lot of them are less. Most of them, I feel like most of them are it. less. It's like the, you know, if it's like a big loaf of bread, it's like 20, yeah. 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, but I love no thawing because I just don't have the executive functioning for thawing I mean, something. Don't it's tell just Wild not... Green this because this probably isn't recommended, but I don't even wait for a preheat. I just throw it in ice cold as a brick. <laughs> Set the temp and walk away. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, if it works for you, your mileage may vary, but if it's working for you, busy, it's been working you for me. Do it's, what works. It's been working yeah. for me because I don't like I'm not sitting there for the for the preheat moment either. You know, I'm not thawing yeah. it. I'm not preheating. We're just yeah. going for it. Because that's because honestly, Wild Grain <laughs> made this product with me in mind. <laughs> yeah. Telling you I love it so much. Um, and I do love that they they did change it. If you tried it like a long time ago and then whatever, now you, it's different a little bit because you can fully customize your wild grain box, which has been a game changer for me because there was one loaf of bread that like people, it just sat in my freezer. Do you know what I mean? Like, so right, now right, I can yeah, get like, any combination of like breads and pastas and the pastries that I want. And yes. like, if you want a box of all bread or all pasta or all pastries, you can have it because we eat so much more pasta in my house right. than we do the pastries, you know? Right. Plus, right. for a limited time, you can get $30 off the first box plus free croissants in every box when you go to wildgrain.com slash busy to start your subscription. Guys, you heard me. There are free croissants in every box. $30 off your first box when you go to wildgrain.com slash busy. That's wildgrain.com slash busy, or you can use promo code busy at the checkout. 
but the movie is really good. And so, yeah. And so you just had that pause moment where did your like body feel physically shaky at any point? That's what yeah, happens been to me. Pretty shaky. Well, I, yeah, I was having, I just was having, it was, I've been having, it's not, to, it's not, it's not, it's not gone. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I was just walking here after doing ADR for Girls 5 Eva. And like, I felt myself like, like I was like, oh shit. Fuck me. Like, uh, I don't know. I was just like, I could feel it. Like, and so then I started to like shake my arms out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I was like crossing 6th Avenue. And I was like, oh, this is like, I look like a per, like I look like a crazy, like, I mean, no, no, you're not supposed to say that, whatever. But I look, I literally looked you looked like you were Unhinged. having a, an experience that... It looked like I was having an experience that no one else is having. Exactly, exactly. So it reminds me of... Remember when Jessica St. Clair talked about the shaking zebra? About how zebras don't have any like mechanism for getting rid of like this energy when they've been like chased by a predator right, right, right. or whatever. And so they yes, just yes, shake. Yes. That's what I do. I literally will shake in a situation like that. That's why I was wondering if that's well, what happened to you. Yeah, it was, it's, yes. Like well, like, days later. Yeah, no, I mean, this has been, right. But this has been like, so then since, so Sunday was like terrible. Yesterday was not, not ideal, not great. But like, yeah. I felt a little bit better in kind of like the morning time. And then in the afternoon, I got like weird again. Yeah. And then today, and I had therapy last night and that was like, it was actually like hard. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I, I don't know. It was just, it was hard. Um, And I also feel like it's, I, you know, it's been, um, I don't know. It's been a bad it's been a bad year. It's been bad. It's actually been bad. It's been bad. It's been bad for a year now. And I don't know, like, I think I've, I've tried to do the things, you know, like I've tried to do all the things like to, to process it, but it like, I just don't think like I've ever had a year where like, it's just been relentless. Yeah. You know, and then, a couple times this year, I've felt like I could take a breath, like things are going to be, and then something has sh- showed up, and it's just like, oh yeah, actually, no, fuck you. And I'm, I don't know what to do, and I'm not, I don't really want to do this, talk about this anymore on the, I don't want to, I mean, I actually just don't want to do this podcast anymore for a while, I don't think, but, um, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to do or where I want to, I don't, I am like having a really hard time, um, knowing kind of how to deal with all of, with the, with, with all of it, because I feel like I've done, I keep doing, I keep doing, like, I keep doing all the things. Like I'm like a meditation and a fucking thing and move your body and fucking work out and like have do therapy and like da, 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 da. And it's fine. It's all fine. And like, you, you know, but like, you can't, if you just keep getting punched in the fucking face, like your nose is, your bro- is broken. Like at, at a certain point, like you're never, you're never getting your fucking original, like beautiful, perfect, straight, nose back. You know what I mean? And that's what I feel like right now. I feel like I'm like, uh, I don't know how to, I don't know. Other than like disassociating and just like, like I literally, like, I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm fucking talking about in this moment. Like I (laughs) started, I was, I don't know. But I have lots of work stuff that I need to figure out. And like, I don't know how to do that. And... Also, just FYI for anyone interested, like moving all of your meetings to one day when you're at the tail end of like a trauma with your kid is not like just cancel the meetings is what I'm going to (laughs) say. Don't do them. Just don't fucking do them. There's no point. I don't remember any of it. Like I'm just like, well, 
tried to take notes, which I think is smart of me, but... Mm. So anyway, that's what's been going on with me, guys. Also, don't know if you saw my Instagram stories today. It turns out I did order Roman shades that I didn't remember. <laughs> Two more fucking Roman shades. I Two saw more. that. I mean... For a total of three Roman shades. I needed one. I yeah. have... I ordered three. Hmm. Hmm. I don't remember the two, two of them. Well, I mean, who knows if those are the two I don't remember. All I know is that the one came first. We put them up. Now I have two extras. <laughs> I just like... Mm. So. I do you remember you saying you needed some, but it seems like you have more than you need now. I think that it's strange. I don't know what... <laughs> Like, yeah, I don't know. And then also, can I just be fucking real? Like, and I, you know, whatever. Part of me is just like, but don't, you know, my kid is going through this thing and this is like scary and hard for her. And it's just like, I can't, I mean, she's not here right now, right? Like she's with Mark in, in LA. Yeah. And also like, you know, I have managed to like f- continue to like, feed cricket and like like I sat with her while she watched The Office on Sunday night you know I wasn't yeah. like in a ball on the floor or anything do you know what I mean like I can yeah. like you know my friend Jenny always says about me like that I'm so good at um just continuing on and coping like I don't ever you know but all that to say um I feel like I'm I don't know I feel like it's uh, really just a very, how about those Golden Globe nominations? <laughs> I didn't even really pay attention to. I have much. no idea. I have no idea who got nominated for anything. All I do know <laughs> is that I have like one group thread and I just like looked at it for two seconds this morning and somebody was like, oh, did they get a Golden Globe nomination? And the other person said yes. So I was like, oh, well, that must have, must have happened today. <laughs> I think it happened yesterday. Oh, and really? I, I think, or the day before. I don't know. Oh, it wouldn't I, have happened on a Sunday, right? I don't know. I really don't pay attention to that kind of stuff just because so much of my job used to be paying so much attention and watching every telecast of every award show to see if there was something to talk about on television and just like trying to make content out of other content. I'm just like, everyone's really talented who makes anything that winds up getting on television. Like, so to single out various things for awards like it's all it's all kind of bullshit unless it's you that's nominated and then like it's amazing and good for you but I just like I don't know it's not for me I don't care so much about the outfits I don't even care about like making jokes about it anymore so you know I'm just happy for people that are recognized but then on the other hand, like, everyone should be recognized for their talent. But then on the other hand, like, I guess if you got to make something that is recognition, you know, like, as Don Draper says in Mad Men, that's what the money that's is for. That's what the money is for. So, you know. um, it, It's just like, that's I don't pay. what the money <laughs> is for. <laughs> that's, uh, I don't pay too close attention to Ugh. it, but I do know that. Uh, one of my friends was nominated and I was like their show was nominated and I was happy but I didn't like seek out additional information on it which is probably not that great for a person on a podcast why we're not it's not like it's a <laughs> fucking pop culture podcast we're not like <gasps> you know like uh, fucking what's it called who what weekly <laughs> we're, we're uh we're not um Bowen and Matt Rogers podcast. What are the, what are the Lost Culch? Not <laughs> Lost Culch baristas. We just like we're talking about like our fucking kids with seizures and <laughs> like her dead friends. Seizure mom podcast. I'm sure there is one, by the there, way. I'm there sure probably there is. is. Um, we don't want to steal your idea if you're the host of the Seizure Mom podcast. 
We're not moms with seizures. We're moms <laughs> who are trying to mom with kids that get seizures. Um, and they're oh not even gosh. kids. They're basically they're adults. Grown up. Both of them. Yeah, I mean, I mean like Bertie's like Bertie's not at a you know there's it's not a pediatric. It's not. It's different. It is different. Yeah, she's a, a young adult. Get seizures yeah. too, like, like you febrile know, like, like seizures or, or what? What'd you say? Febrile seizures from having a high fever. Yeah. Oh, is that what that's called? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, I, kids, I, I a lot suppose of kids do that. I suppose it could happen to an adult, I guess, but it's more common in little kids. Um, yeah. Lo- I mean, listen. The, as you're saying all this stuff, like you're, it's making me realize this is why, like, a sitcom character who's like forty plus years old is always going around going, "What now? What now?" Because that's what, like. That's what this part of life is, apparently. Like, what the fuck now? We're just, like, at that stage where fucking shit is happening all the time and we need it to slow down. And I don't know what the answer is or if there, you know, if there is an answer to it. Like, it's... It sucks. Like, life is fucking hard, you know? And so many unlucky things happen, and then so many lucky things happen. But also, it's the unlucky ones that, like, stick to you like shit on your shoe, you know? And it, it's it's the things that, like... Yeah, I mean, I guess if we were taking notes all the time and we went back and compared the notes and like added everything up it might on paper it might feel like there was more balance to it but the truth is that like the bad stuff obviously is so much more affecting than the good stuff and you know it just reminds me of like I don't think he'll care that I'm saying this but like sometimes when I worked at watch what happens live like on my way home when the night was done and I was tired, Andy would like text me a tweet where someone had said like he said or did something that they didn't like. And I would be like, okay. And, but it was, it was a bummer to me. Right. Because I'm like, I'm going home, you know, like I, like um, I'm leaving work and I'm trying to like leave this behind on this like one hour drive back to the suburbs before I have to like get up in the morning and start it all over again. And so it would like bum me out. Like it was bummer energy. Not that like, you know, not that like your boss can't tell you like, this is something we should think about or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then I would look and there would be like a thousand positive comments. And I would literally have to hunt for like the one bad comment that he showed me. Mm -hmm. And, but it would, that's the one that sticks with you. You know, that's the one that sticks with you. And that's like, I try to remember that with the energy that I'm putting out to other people is that like, when I say something, when I say something negative, it's going to have a thousand times more impact than if I say a thousand positive things. Negative, it just ha- it just holds more power. But when like, bad shit happens in your life. It's not like someone just saying something mean or out of pocket to you. Like when when bad shit happens, it just sticks with you a thousand times more than good stuff, you know? Which is like that, it sucks. But it's very hard to sit down when you think of like your recent past or whatever. And we're always talking about years, you know? And, like, bad things happen in threes. Everything happens in threes. Like, if you pay attention long enough, you know. But we think of bad things happening in threes because those are the ones that, like, stick out enough to us to remember. Like, oh, that thing happened, and then that thing happened, and then that thing happened. And it's just the really unfair thing that our brains do to us. No, I know. And, like, that's, like, part of why, you know, at Hoffman or whatever, you know, you, like start the day with gratitude, right? And you, like, think of, like, the three things that you're grateful for. And, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I've done, I've been, I've continued to, like, do a ton of this shit throughout this year of, like, trying to remember 
that, you know, like, uh, or just like those tools, right? Like, and, and meditation and like, um, yeah, focusing on all the things that have been and, you know, continue to be good. Like, look, I'm like, work stuff for the most part has been like, was, was, you know, like this girls five ever and, and me like be getting to be in mean girls is like incredible. And I think they're both going to be really, really good. You know, that's awesome. That's fucking great. I'm so excited about that. I mean, there's lots of fucking, of course, there's lots of stuff that I'm like very grateful. I mean, there's so many things I'm grateful for, you know what I mean? And but if something doesn't traumatize you, then you, like if something's the opposite of traumatizing, it just doesn't stick in your body, in your brain, the way that something... Well, love does. I mean, falling in love or... You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. That's true. And like feeling that, I think, does too, you know? Like I think about my birthday party in LA and like how that felt. You know, that was amazing. Like, that was so fun that whole day, you know? Yeah. So I don't know if I think that's, like, entirely true. Like, I think it just has to be an extreme, you know? Like, you're right. It's not, like, the mundane things that stick out. It sort of does have to be, like, a big deal, you know? A big dinner, whatever. Like, you know, right. some like, you're getting, being honored by something for whatever, yeah, you fall in love or like whatever, you know. Yeah. You finish a book. <laughs> <laughs> and you write one. You write a book. Just even reading one is... Ugh, I know. Don't I know it? <laughs> so fucking hard. Oh, Thrive Cosmetics. How I love you. <laughs> It went with me to uh, went with me, went with me to Sweden. You rushed out of the house, but you grabbed that Thrive Cosmetics. Let me tell you something. That Thrive Cosmetics, I love so much that I have a purse <laughs> set. That I have two. Is, I have two sets, guys. You, under, you understand a purse set, obviously. That's how you know when you have like a like a bathroom set and then a set that's in your purse yeah. at all times. Correct. So it goes with you everywhere. Because you yes. can't be racing around looking for it. You need to know that you have one set in your purse and one set in your bathroom. I mean, I don't do my makeup in my bathroom. It's at my little like vanity table in my bedroom. But I need one set there, one set to go with me at all times. I, I have a go bag, a little no, go bag of Thrive, Thrive Cosmetics. <laughs> a go bag. I, I'm going to get a third set for my earthquake bag. Here in Los Angeles. I mean, honestly, honestly, we joke, but do not we? a bad idea. But do we? <laughs> I know so many of you listening know what we're talking about because busy our secret Santa for the podcast listeners, um, or El Elfster. We did it on Elfster, uh, organized by our friend Jennifer, our bestie Jennifer. Um, thank you, Jennifer. So I have noticed people are thanking each other on Facebook for the gifts, and so many people on their wish list put Thrive Cosmetics, and so many besties bought Thrive Cosmetics for their podcast friends. So I, it's making me so happy. It's thrilling me. I love that, guys. Yeah. Well, you're going to love it because, you know, I've talked about this liquid lash extensions mascara now in a way that is, I don't know, some people might say unhealthy. You know what I mean? Like, I'm so <laughs> obsessed with it. And... And a lot of times people ask me on my Instagram, just like straight up on my Instagram, what what do you use on your lashes? Because yeah. it just makes them look incredible. Yeah. Um, the Brilliant Eye Brightener is key. Yeah. I use it for everything. It's like a highlighter like, stick, guys. So you can... Yeah. You, you like... It can go all over your eyes. Uh, you can put it like just sort of like in the corner. You can use it just as a highlighter on your cheeks. I love it. I've gotten really into 
the impact full semi-permanent smoothing lipstick because I'm here and it's cold. It's cold and and the formula is so nourishing and and moisturizing. It has all of these like moisturizing thing ingredients in it, like oils, botanical oils and vitamin E. And anyway, I'm just a huge fan of that. So I have a color that I've been wearing a lot in in my purse, in my go bag now. Um, <laughs> but guys, there's uh, there are lots of stocking stuffers for every makeup bag. You can save extra on pre-made sets that include, you know, my favorite liquid lash extensions mascara and the Infinity Waterproof Eyeliner and their Luminous Brilliant Eye Brightener that we were just talking about that we love so much. Yes. Why don't you give the gift of Thrive Cosmetics? Luxury beauty that gives back. Right now, you can get an exclusive 20% off your first order at thrivecosmetics.com slash best. That's Thrive Cosmetics, C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash best for 20% off your first order. You know, truly the hit gift last year, and guess what? It's been requested for other rooms in the house. Oh. Were the aura frames that we got for the grandparents in the the family. Yes. And guys, this was, are you ready for it? Before Aura was a sponsor on our podcast. I literally looked up which the best, like what the best digital picture frame was and it was on like every single list. It just was very... Yeah, it was one of Oprah's favorite things. Well, yes. And then it was one of Oprah's favorite things. Exactly. I'm I'm just saying like sometimes you'll see something everywhere, but then once it gets on Oprah's list, I'm like, I'm getting it. (laughs) Obviously. And here's the thing, like you can give it to someone in your family and then you can preload it with pictures um, of you guys together or like just your family. And the best part is you can keep updating it with real-time pictures on the app on your phone. Beam pictures to your family's house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from your phone. It's amazing wherever you are. I know. And like to me, that is so cool because you guys know if you have, you know, kids and your parents want to see like send me an updated picture. You just be like, check your aura frame. (laughs) Right. I added one today. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's just a nice way to let someone that you love know that you're thinking about them too. You know, just that you want to share something with them and, and everything doesn't always have to be like, it doesn't have to take a huge effort to stay in touch with people you love. You can sometimes just send a little snapshot that's between you and them. It's just such a smart gift. Also, can I just tell you one thing? And guys, I'm just going to share this tip with you, okay? Here's what you do with the grandparents. Make them feel like they're n- number one. You know, a couple weeks after Christmas or whatever, update the aura, update the aura with like new pictures, you know? And yeah, talk to your parents. Say, and I didn't post those pictures on Facebook or Instagram or anywhere. They're just for you on the aura frame. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, yes. And then they think like, you know, and then it's just like very special because you, they're like, not everybody gets to see this adorable picture. You know it's what I mean? exclusive. It's exclusive. Everyone likes exclusive <laughs> things, guys. This is all I'm saying. Yes. And it's yes. super easy to set up. This is like my parents had no issues. Like, it's just the easiest thing. Okay. So... Give the perfect gift this holiday by visiting AuraFrames.com today and get $30 off their best-selling frames with the code BUSY. These frames sell out quickly, so get yours before they're gone. That's A-U-R-A frames.com with our promo code BUSY. Terms and conditions apply. Well, um, we also had a thing here that I think was traumatizing in a way, but also like proved to me that I think I'm the most useless psychic in the world 
And uh, I don't think it traumatized me enough until after I realized whatever. Um, Saturday night, we were headed out um, to Arden Marine's birthday party, which is, as you know, my favorite event of the year in Los Angeles. And we were going to get on Monday morning um, a a new charger installed to charge my car in the, like right outside the garage. And so Eli, who has a ton of vintage furniture stored in the garage, uh, we were telling him he, he needed to shift it around. Uh, he needed to like do some work in the garage and shift it around so that there was room to work on installing the charger. And, um, So we went to the party and we had a great time and uh, just we saw Shantira and got to hang out with Shantira and Libby and Arden is like the most radiant, just, she's just a wonderful person and like the little speech that she gave before she blew out her candles, it was amazing and uh, and love her boyfriend and saw my friend Jerry O'Connell, saw our friend's John Ross Bowie and Jamie Denbo and saw Cameron Esposito. These are all people who have been on the podcast. If you're noticing a pattern, um, just saw a bunch of a bunch of people. Wayne Fetterman, who hasn't been on the podcast, but love him. Dana Gould, love everybody. Um, and so anyway, we came home late at night. And the garage was open, but the lights were mm-hmm. off. Like we just saw that the garage was open. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, I have to backtrack. As we were leaving, this is the part about me being a useless psychic. Yeah. As we were leaving, e- the yeah. garage was open. Eli was in the garage with all of his stuff. The lights were on. He was working and he was like, bye, drive safely, have fun. And I rolled down the window and I said, please be careful. Don't get crushed. No, no. Casey. Oh, fuck me. Casey, I, I hate this. We just I know you hate happened. it. Just tell me what happened. I can't handle I actually can't handle it. What happened? We got home. The garage lights were off, but the garage was open. Yeah. And as we pulled into that, we were like, oh, did Eli forget to shut the garage door? As we pulled in to where my parking spot was, the garage door was just on the ground like in front of the garage. Like it took us a minute to register. And what was happening, we, right? When we went in, the kids were up and Eli was like, I was trying, I was trying to close the garage door. The cable oh. snapped. It fell down. I was oh, able to God. get out of the way. Like a it fell onto like a bookshelf or whatever and smushed mm-hmm. a bookshelf or something. God. Uh that he had out there. But Um, we were like, okay. And he was like, I'm so sorry. And we were like, it was an accident. Like, we're so sorry that the cable snapped. But it's so weird that I said, don't get crushed. And I was literally thinking of like a very specific incident. I don't know why this popped into my head. But I was thinking of a specific incident. When my dad, when I was a little kid, my dad was an EMT. And it just popped in my head as we were leaving. Anyway, we were like, okay, it's no big deal. Whatever. You're okay. Most Mm -hmm. of your stuff is okay, you know. And so at first we were like, it's not a big deal. Here's a little tidbit. Garage door repairs in LA at least are open 24-7. The kids did not know that. They were they were just describing to us how like Lincoln ran out to try to help Eli with the garage door and how it was so, so, so heavy. And I didn't realize, we were like, are you both okay? Are you okay? And Eli was insisting that he was not hurt, but that he um, he was just shook. Like he said, he yeah. had to take a minute to be like, holy shit, that could have killed me. And um, then Matt went out to look and, he w- and they were like, we're both okay, we're both okay. And then Matt went out to look and he was like, there's bloody handprints all over the garage door. So somebody is not okay. Uh, and so 
the upshot is like everything is fine and everyone is fine. And, uh, you know, we got several estimates and the garage door was fixed uh, almost immediately. But when I saw like the handprints all over the doors and thought about like my two guys and they're both big guys, they're both like six two trying to like hold this door up and keep it from harming them and, you know, and just it's fucking crazy. And so I have done that thing where I've just been like looking at that door on the ground and like, you know, shaking, like what could have happened, you know? Um, And I don't know why I just had that thought of like, don't get crushed or whatever, but, and I don't know. And, and I'm like at that is that does that make it like a like did i fulfill some prophecy did i give crush energy out into the universe by saying that or was it lucky that i said that because then he was being like more careful not to stand directly under the garage door anyway it was fucking scary and uh but now it's fine the door's back and has a new cable and uh knock on wood hopefully it won't snap for a really long time, but well, that maybe was ever. Up. Wait, I don't. I don't know. I've never even heard of a cable, like of a garage door cable doing that. I don't know. I guess like, literally ever. Like I've never heard of that. I will say when we lived in Connecticut one time, we heard a weird noise and like the uh, spring that operated our garage door uh-huh. had snapped and it had like shot up into the ceiling. And okay. was stuck in the ceiling. And so I suppose had that happened when someone was standing under the garage door, it would have immediately fallen down. But it it just snapped while the garage door was closed. I don't know. Yeah, but I ours, guess- well, our, I remember, I was just trying to think, it's been a minute since I had a fucking garage door. Um, I feel like we always had issues with the one in LA. And like we, it, it would be like, it would just stop working. And then we'd have to like, undo the chain thing and then to do it manually do you know what i mean like yeah. we could do that yeah i don't know i don't know i that's terrifying and i'm so grateful that they were the, the kids were fine but also that like i know what you mean about that like did you manifest it or did you or did you have like a premonition kind of thing yeah and it's weird. I've like been thinking a lot about that. Well, you know, I like texted you and I was like, is it possible that somebody put a curse on me? <laughs> and you're like, I don't think so. But I think that that's like, I don't know. Like that. I, then I was thinking about that. Like, is that even energy that I like? Like if you put that into the, I don't fucking, I don't know what anything is. Do you know what I mean? Like, I yeah. don't know what this world is what earth is i don't know what we're doing and i don't know what we are people are we people i don't fucking know i don't know i'm just saying like (laughs) i in what you're describing and the fact that you like had that thought i'm saying to you in this moment in time in history in my life i legitimately think anything is possible. Yeah. That makes sense. It's possible that someone put a curse on you. Well, fucking take it off. Whoever you are. (laughs) Like, just fucking stop it. Stupid. (gasps) Oh, my gosh. Maybe... Well, maybe... Maybe we can take it off of you. Who knows? Yeah, I think we can probably. There's, I'm sure there's a recipe on TikTok for reversing curses. Yeah, I think Marcella Kroll has one. All right. But I think it's mostly just about saying like, you know, yeah, like you like say it out loud, right? Like nothing, like no harm, something. I don't know. There's something you say. Something you say. <laughs> you say something. <laughs> something you say. <laughs> oh um, my gosh yeah 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 so guys such a fun podcast i'm so glad you joined us for <laughs> uh yeah i don't know casey i don't know well i mean listen 
We've given everyone an update on where we were last week. Yes. And what happened? Well, you were just in LA. <laughs> living your life. I was. I was. But also like, you know, yeah, I was like, I was feeling it for you because it's literally so close, like shockingly close to... I know. Even what? that is so fucking weird. Like, what? It's, it's so like, weird. Why? I, how is that even possible? I don't know. Like, I don't know either. I don't know. It's very strange, but it's also par for the course, you know, with you and me. I don't know. what. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. 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 I don't still anything really for Christmas. I like trying to. But I mean, I'm not, I didn't decorate. Nothing's happened. You know, like that's just, that ship sailed, I think. It's like yeah. done. And I've been trying to like get a bunch of shit, like at least in my head figured out, but that's not really working either. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Do you think Cricket will be disappointed if you don't decorate? Or will not she yet. not care? She doesn't no. care. Okay. Well, then don't make yourself do it, I guess. No, the good news is I know that the snow babies will be out at my mom's house. <laughs> yeah. They have their tree up, you know, like we're just gonna, that's the, there's no, there's no, no bottle brush trees. This There's no little cute scapes. There's nothing, nothing's happening. It's fine. It's a fine. Yeah. Um, it's hard. Just, but, you know. you know, yeah, last Christmas for us was just shit, you know? Yeah, I remember. So, I, I mean, you just, sometimes wow. it's, sometimes it's a building year. What? Why is there a giant fly staring at me? Why? <laughs> Why? I'm serious. What does it mean? It just... Well, it's probably like disoriented because it's probably like, why am I out in the winter? You know, like, why, what am I doing? And it probably came inside to get warm, but like flies don't live so long. So I think sometimes they act freaky when they're at the end of their life cycle and they, you know. Just walking around on the Zoom recorder is the fly the thing that's been turning the volumes up? <laughs> Probably. That's how easy the knobs are to turn. Really fucking bizarre, I have to tell you. Okay, let's see. Let's see, let's see if I can do it. Let's see if I can do it. He's just sitting there on the Zoom recorder. Like, what is he doing? Like, at the power button. I'm not kidding. He's trying to shut it off. <laughs> he doesn't want you to say anything incriminating about him. Is it a he or a she? I don't know. Do flies have genders? That's a really good question. I don't know. I would. No, they must. I would think, but I don't. I honestly don't know. Is it flying around now? Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm glad it can still fly. Can do what it meant. It's meant to do. He seems fine. I need to like get rid of him though because it's like freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a real fly lover. Who loves flies? I don't love them, but I just accept them because I grew up on a farm and horses. The fucking flies are everywhere. Like they're just, you know, they're just like a fact of daily life. Here, I never wait, loved wait. them, but let me, let me open a window or something. Where did he go? <laughs> Where did it go? No, no, it disappeared now. I don't see it. Do you? Oh, no, I don't see it. But I do see the beautiful sun is casting beautiful rays through your window. I am grateful for the rays. <laughs> and the beautiful sun. Well, you have to go pick up Cricket, correct? I have to pick up Cricket. Since we haven't gotten to what we're doing our best at this week, 
why don't we wrap it up here for now? And then yeah. we'll come back later in the week and tell everyone what we're doing our best at. Okay. Let's do and if, that. If we haven't done our best at anything yet, then this gives us a it, little this is time. Give us a day. <laughs> It'll give us a little time to get on that shit. Okay. We can do that. We can do that for sure. <laughs> I, see I see the fly. He's trying to get out. He wants to get out. He He's wants to the get out. They're not the smartest. And you know what? It's really like, smart. it's a bummer because they have so many eyes and they can like see so much. And I'm it. like, find the window, dude. Dude, the window. Go to the window. Um. Okay. Okay. All right, you guys. We love you. Thank you so much. And we'll talk to you later this week. Later. Later this okay. week. Hey. All right. Bye. Oh, no.